All right, let's call this meeting to order. This is the market at the Square Advisory Board. Um, Heather Ann, did you please call the roll? Okay, Ms. Kane? Present. Thank you. Ms. Corris? Present. Thank you. Mr. Luttrell? Present. Thank you. Mr. Miles? Ms. Oberg? Present. Mr. Sam? Mr. Shetty? Mr. O'Brien? Present. All right, good Mr. evening. Taylor. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and Ms. Wu. Present. All right. All right, the uh, first order is the approval of the minutes from September 16th, 2020. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? I say motion. Is there a second? I second. Uh, so I think that's moved by Mr. O'Brien and uh, seconded by Ms. Kane. Are there any corrections? All right, Heather Ann, will you call the roll, please? We can't hear you right now, Heather Ann. Oh, there. Ms. Now Kane? Present. Ms. Corris? Present. Oh, this oh, isn't the roll. This, so this is approval of the minutes. Approve minutes. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry, Ms. Kane, do you approve? Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you for a minute. That's okay. I've been having some headphone issues. Um, Ms. Corris, do you approve? Or yes. Or I her name. Okay. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Mr. Luttrell? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Oberg? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Wu? Yes. All right. All right, those minutes are approved. Are there any additions to the agenda tonight? All right, seeing none, uh, it is time for public input. If you wish to address the Market at the Square Advisory Board, please raise your hand at this time. All right, I don't see any uh, public members that want to address us. Presentations, uh, so basically tonight is all about presentations. So we'll start with Brian. You're muted. You're muted, Brian. That never happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'd like to present the uh, end of season report, which upon approval will become the annual report for the market. Um, pretty sure I can share that on my screen. I think I might need to yeah. try that. All right, you should see something that says end of season 2020 market report. Actually, uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So uh, the first slide is just kind of a side of explanation about the pandemic and its effect on the market. Um, kind of explaining how uh, we were restricted uh, for spacing to allow for social distancing and that our vendor pool was kind of uh, constrained at the beginning of the market to just essential products, which included uh, fresh, fruit, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, prepared foods, and plants, and soap. 
Um, here's a breakdown of our market participation uh, participants this year. The bulk of our participants for the market were growers, um, which is, you know, a uh, little bit different than a regular season, I guess. We usually have a uh, majority of craft vendors, but this year the growers were a little bit higher. Um, we had 67 vendors in total. Those uh, were who were actually at the market and vended. We started allowing non-food vendors on July 4th. Um, I guess that's, that's that. Market attendance. Um, market attendance followed our typical trend uh, for a usual year of kind of being slow at the start and then picking up as the season progressed. Overall, the season was down about 20%. Um, and it was especially low, it was especially low compared to prior years in the first, I don't know, six or seven weeks of the market. And then by July 4th or so, it kind of picked up to be a little more on, uh, on target for the season. Uh, we averaged close to 2,500 people a week over the course of the market. And we had a total of 67,000 plus people for the season. And those are actually pretty accurate numbers. Uh, we weren't, we were still calling them an estimated count, but we were clicking every person that came in through the main gate at the market, which is not to say that people couldn't get in other ways, uh, but mostly they came in that way. So we, we could count them pretty accurately. Uh, the SNAP program, the combined benefits distributed and double match incentives totaled a little over $25,000 for the season. And that funding for those programs is provided by Farm Credit Illinois Experimental Station. And then uh, the group funding for Experimental Station is provided by USDA. And again, like that kind of distribution of those funds kind of follows the, the trend to market attendance, right? Where the highest, uh, Use of those funds occurs at the height of the market season, mid July to kind of mid end of August. All right, here's a breakdown of uh, vendors that uh, received the SNAP, uh, who redeemed the SNAP uh, coupons and uh, benefits. Um, so there were 24, 28, pardon me, 28 farm and value added vendors this season that took advantage of this program. And all told, there were a little over $23,000 in sales that were distributed back to those vendors. Uh, our social media uh, in general has uh, kind of increased over the course of this season. I know Heather Ann's gonna talk about some social media stuff very specifically, but in general, uh, everything was up except for our Twitter, which kind of fell by 1%. Um, I will say at this time, I do not have a complete financial view of the market as far as like our revenue and our expenses. I am working on that. It's still a little bit, I don't know, there's still some questions I have and I didn't, I, I prefer to give you guys uh, a kind of more finalized version of that. Um, needless to say, like, I don't think we went over budget, um, but it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting financial year for the market. So I think that's my last slide. Yeah, that's my last slide there. All right, questions for Brian. Brian, do you have the breakout of, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, benefits versus uh, incentives? Benefits versus incentives? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, so we distributed a total, uh, a little bit over $12,000 in incentives. And there were, so it was like 12,032. And then there was uh, a little over 13,000 in actual snail, uh, snails, snap sales, also known as snails. Um, so uh, that, that's what was distributed and then redeemed for the sales was, it was almost $12,000 and then the incentives was just a little over 11,000. Um, and those incentives are, like there's some that are redeemable by 
fruit and vegetable only, and then some that are kind of more universal. So I have, I think I have more detailed information on that someplace if you're, if you're interested. I would be interested. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know what it looks like. I think it might just be in a table. Uh, That's fine. But yeah, okay. I can, I can distribute that. All right, other questions for Brian? So Brian, uh, I had a question. You said that we had approximately 65,000 people attend the market. Is that right? Uh, yes. I remember that number correctly. I believe, I believe that's what I... Uh, it's either 65 or 67. What is what I know that the estimate is probably a more accurate count this year. What is uh, the, if, if we look at the past couple of years, what is the average number of attendees based on the other? So, oh. I think I made a, hold on a second. I made a note about that. Uh, I think last year we were up around 79,000. Um, so here I can find that pretty quick. So it's, again, like overall the attendance was off about 20%. Um, and last year, we were at, oh, really? Yeah, last year we had 3,029 visitors per week. Um, so that was our estimated weekly. And I thought I had a hold of the, uh, of the total, but I, want, I remember the total being something close to 79,000. I was surprised at how close they actually were this year. Like it didn't seem that radically different. I mean, I think the last time we met, you had mentioned that uh, an informal survey of people who were <clears throat> selling at the market, they didn't feel like they had decreased in the amount of sales as much as 20%. Is that right? Uh, no. Uh, uh, yes, that is right. Actually, uh, informal survey, uh, it seemed like many of the vendors felt that they were doing better than last season, um, that their sales were up or at least better than they expected. Let me put it that way. I think we had a end of season, uh, end of season quiz. <laughs> I know that's not what it is. All right. So yeah, so I sent out and uh, I sent out to all the vendors. I got 28 responses and 67 of them, 67 percent of them said that their sales were better than expected this year, and at least half of them felt that they had uh, better than expected customers this year. So I guess maybe I don't want to like get into it were these sales better better or not, but than the previous years. But informally, I was told by quite a few of the vendors that they were actually doing that their business was up. I'm not going to say how much because it seemed to vary. Some of them were like, we can't tell the difference. Some of them were like, we've had a really great year. Um, so, but I'm sure there were some for who that wasn't 100 percent true. Would you be able to put together like a one sheet kind of summary of, of the PowerPoint slides and some of the information and share that with the advisory board and also city council? Sure. Um, yeah, we can do that. Great. All right, before we move on, are there any other pending questions for Brian? Okay, so Heather Ann, you're gonna tell us about social media? Hi, yes, I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me clearly before I start. We can hear you. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, let me go ahead and get my screen shared. Can everyone see this? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick um, overview of our social media uh, for the market this season. Uh, I kind of took that upon myself as a program specialist to um, not only while helping Brian run the market to try and up our social media a little bit. Um, so here we go. Um, this is just a quick Twitter overview. Uh, I will admit our Twitter presence was not as strong this year. Um, we have 
at the end of the market, a total of 4,656 followers. Um, we continue to have active profile visits and tweet impressions, even when we're not posting to Twitter, though. Um, we do have some plans in place to grow our Twitter presence. Um, our market mail is supposed to be posting weekly to Twitter, but we didn't catch that in time that it's not. So um, we need to fix that uh, or I'll, I will fix that. <laughs> um, consistent content posting between all of our social media platforms. We were, pre we were fairly good about posting between uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, so really getting on Twitter as well would be great. Um, and then also market day of tweets. Um, and then what you see here in the graphic is just kind of this is our header um, for our banner market Twitter account. And then here were some of the top, um, this was the top tweet in June um, that got the most impressions. Uh, and that was just announcing that yes, we were going to be open for the 4th of July. We had a lot of questions about that. Um, next, I'll go over Facebook and Instagram. Our Facebook and Instagram page, uh, this is the estimated reach uh, for the market season. Um, please note that the spikes are on Saturdays, anytime you see a little spike, because um, we did a lot of posting on Saturdays, as well as a lot of people are looking for us on Saturdays. Um, the percentage increase you might see there, uh, don't pay attention to that, because Facebook and Instagram do the immediate like I pulled this for six months so they were comparing it to the six months previous which would have been in our off season. Um, so let's go next. Our Facebook audience um, tends to be women, uh, people who identify as women age 35 to 44, um, both Facebook and Instagram. Um, heavily women, they make up 81% of our followers. That's the graphic there. And then our audience, as far as where do they come from, mostly Champaign, uh, Urbana, Chicago, and Muhammad. But we do have other surrounding cities, including Danville, St. Joe, Rantoul, Monticello, Decatur, and Savoy. And then as far as countries, we actually have quite a wide reach for countries. Um, Brazil, Taiwan, but also others like Germany, India, South Korea, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Thailand. I would attribute that to our student population. So let's, part of the plan is to grow that. <laughs> let's see. And then this is just a little overview of the content. Uh, our top 10 posts average 3.9 thousand reach with an average of 64 likes and reactions per post. Um, in the early months, posts included announcements about COVID guidelines, changes to the market, live video, and vendor content. Um, in July and August, posts included reminders about the COVID-19 guidelines, market maps, updates on seasonal produce and vendor content. You can see also our average reach and likes. And then in September and October, Posts included reminders about end of season, announcements about the indoor market, updates on seasonal produce, local events, and vendor content. Um, these are the Facebook numbers only. Uh, total likes beginning of the season were just down around 14,000. And then at the end of the season, they were up about 500. Uh, so we did gain some uh, coverage there this year. If I did my math right, I think that's an increase of about 3.8%. <laughs> uh, where do they come from? This was such a wonderful picture, by the way. Um, this was like one of the first couple of weeks of the market. They came in with their matching masks to their shirt. It was wonderful. <laughs> um, a lot of the hits that we get on our Facebook, um, people are being redirected from our, our website. Um, the Market at the Square website and Google searches. They're also being directed from places like Smile Politely uh, and other search engines, Yahoo, Bing, and Dogpile. That's not one I was aware of, um, but it had quite a few people actually. And then other websites um, that help promote the Market at the Square, like Central Illinois Produce, The Land Connection, Harvest Market, and the Urbana City website. 
Uh, next year's goals, um, increase awareness of SNAP and WIC benefits, uh, how they work, incentives, who accepts them at the market. I'd like to make some uh, increases about getting um, vendors on board of like saying, yes, we accept this or we don't at the beginning of the market so we can make a big, um, even not like a book, but like I have a little sheet of paper I like to give out to people to let them know who at the market accepts WIC and SNAP. Um, run targeted Facebook ads to increase followers and awareness of the market. This year, we didn't run any ads, to be honest. Everything was obtained organically and it was it was still a really good reach. Um, I think the numbers show that we had a good organic reach. And then uh, we've also applied to do a Farmers Market Coalition Instagram takeover. We'll see if they uh, select us to be one of those um, markets. And hopefully we'll hear back from them about that um, by February. So that was my last slide. Go ahead and all right. All right, questions for Mary Ann. O'Brien? Um, mine's more of two comments, but uh, just uh, for your reference, I Based on the, you were talking about where people were checking from in terms of other countries, those are actually just IP addresses, not where the person's actually from. So a lot of countries will pop up as visiting your site and it's basically just someone getting rooted through an IP address and it has no bearing. So I wouldn't really look at that to say you're reaching an international student population. Um, the other thing uh, which I don't know if it'll be brought up now, but just so everyone's aware, the, we will have a universal SNAP incentive fund uh, in the summer. So SNAP and WIC will be very different, but it'll be awesome because you can use it everywhere. Yes, yes, working on that together to get, um, get all the markets on the same page. Yay, <laughs> it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. Are there uh, any questions other? or comments? No, I did see. Um, oh, thank you very much, Heather Ann. Appreciate it. Uh, I did see Darius was on the uh, the Zoom call tonight. Darius, I hate to put you on the spot, but would you like to introduce yourself if you're still there? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Darius White, uh, new uh, to join the city staff uh, as an economic development coordinator. Uh, just wanted to sit in and support uh, the market. Thank you. All right. Um, so our presentations are over. We I don't believe we have any new business unless people tell me otherwise. Okay. All right. Well, those are our items on the agenda. I know this board likes to take a vote to adjourn, so I will entertain a vote to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Heather Ann, would you take the vote? All right, voting to adjourn. Ms. Kane? Yes. Ms. Corris? Aye. Mr. Lettrell? Yes. Ms. Oberg? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. <laughs> and Ms. Wu? Yes. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Have a wonderful holiday season and stay warm, everyone. <laughs>